First, thank you, um, Senator Johnson, for the opportunity to share Maddie's story and to all of you for your willingness to listen. This isn't easy for me, and it's, this has been very clearly emotional, so I'm going to read what I've written so I don't lose track. My name is Stephanie, and this is my daughter, Maddie, and we live in Ohio. On January 20th, Maddie received her second dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine as a participant in the clinical trial for 12 to 15 year olds. All three of our kids volunteered and were excited to participate in the trial as a way to help us all return to normal life. My husband works in the medical field and I have a degree in electrical engineering. We are pro-vaccine and pro-science, which is why we agreed to let Maddie and her two older brothers volunteer for the trial. Before Maddie got her final dose of the vaccine, she was a healthy 12-year-old who got straight A's um, and had lots of friends. She had a life. She was energetic. She was not like this. Although she does still have lots of friends. Upon receiving the second shot, Maddie immediately felt pain at the injection site. And over the next 24 hours, she developed severe abdominal and chest pain. And the way she described the chest pain, and I quote, it feels like my heart is being ripped out through my neck. She had painful electrical shocks down her neck and spine that forced her to walk hunched over. She had extreme pain in her fingers and toes. It actually made them turn white, and they were cold whenever you touched them. She had edema. Um, so my husband immediately took her to the ER as instructed by the vaccine trial nurse administrator, which is what we were instructed to do. Her blood was taken for a renal profile and tested. She was checked for appendicitis, which she did not have, and given an IV with some medicine and sent home. However, in the discharge papers from the Children's Hospital ER that she went to, the diagnosis stated adverse effect of vaccine initial encounter. This would be the only time that that was written in her medical charts, but it's in there. Over the next two and a half months, her abdominal, muscle, and nerve pain became unbearable. She had developed additional symptoms that included gastroparesis, nausea and vomiting, erratic blood pressure and heart rate, memory loss, she mixes up words, brain fog, headaches, dizziness, fainting, she fell and hit her head, and then um, seizures. She had verbal, she developed verbal and motor tics. She had loss of feeling from the waist down and muscle weakness. Drastic changes in her vision, urinary retention and loss of bladder control, severely irregular and heavy menstrual cycles, and eventually she had to have an NG tube put in to get nutrition. All of these symptoms are still here today. Some days are worse than others. Our greatest challenge came when her doctors began to consider an alternative diagnosis. Well, she really didn't have one before, so it was the first one. So like everybody else, she had lots of tests, but not nearly as many tests as everybody else, and she's a child. Why didn't they do this? all those tests on her? Sorry. So because they couldn't figure it out, one physician labored, labeled her as having functional neurologic disorder, saying it was due to anxiety. This concerned us, and we didn't agree with it because she doesn't have the anxiety. Look at her. I mean, what 13-year-old can sit here calmly, okay, if they have anxiety or mental issues? At one point, they even tried to admit her to a mental hospital. So we did seek additional medical opinions, some of which came from this group. In June, we connected her neurologist with another doctor that's doing research on adverse reactions like Maddie's. She was finally provided, but they finally gave her an MRI, did an MRI of her brain, an MRV, and a bunch of additional blood tests. It took five months to get that done. 
Over the past five months, Maddie has been to the ER nine times and has been hospitalized three times for a total of two months in the hospital. What I want to ask, and Maddie volunteered for the Pfizer trial. Why? Why aren't they researching her to figure out why this happened? So other people don't have to go through this. Instead, they're just seeing it's mental. If anybody's mental, it's me. <laughs> so today our journey as parents to help our daughter Maddie continues. All we want is for Maddie to be seen, heard, and believed because she has not been. And we want her to get the care she desperately needs so that she can go back to normal. Why is she not back to normal? She was totally fine before this. She did the right thing trying to help everybody else and they're not helping her.